Do you hear that in the background? That's the sound of wedding bells. Oh. <laughs> I thought you could hear the seagull that was on my end. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wedding seagull as well, yeah? Yeah. A wedding seagull. Congratulations, Peter Austin, Ooh. or as we should now call you, Mr. Peter Austin. Oh, very good. Yes. Uh, I literally, literally just got back from uh, where my family live. Um, just been there for, I don't know, four or five nights getting married and then spending time with the family. And mm -hmm. I have driven home. I have unlocked the front door. I have carried my wife over the threshold, literally. Excellent. Um, Excellent. Which is, I'm sure, highly misogynistic and patriarchal. And I have now come upstairs and hit record on my podcast recording. So, yeah. Amazing. What a trooper. What a trooper. Well, thank you both for coming and for the top-notch content <laughs> from it as well. Oh, oh your I poor mean, family. It was an event ripe for the content. It uh, was. The content, in fact, played a part in some of the speeches as well, which oh was unexpected. God. It was very unexpected. Um, well, it, I knew something was going to happen, but I didn't think it would be from that angle. So uh, Amy's dad did a speech, of course, and part of that speech involved sort of ragging on me, appropriately so. Um, and in the lead up to the wedding, he'd been sort of saying, oh, you better be nervous about my speech. You should, <laughs> oh, it's all ready and, you know, it's going to be bad. And I was saying to him, like, I'm trying to think, like, you know, we, we know each other reasonably well, but I've not been to their place that many times that, like, there's enough ammunition. I was like, what do you, what's happened between me and you at, say, your house that you've got, like, all these stories? And he just rather ominously said... Well, it's all online, isn't it? And I was like, oh. <laughs> and I suddenly realized, okay, well, now there's like six years of stories um, and content. But I thought he would just be referring to videos and stuff. But he actually just talked about kind of the history of uh, the channel and like, like you know, yeah. videos and things. It was strange. Yeah. Read aloud a couple of your most famous quotes as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, super famous quotes. I mean, one of them was pretty famous. Uh, with zero context, he announced to a room of 80 people that uh, I'm quoted as saying, your vagina is beautiful. So um, good. I could hear so an good. aunt of mine hooting from the, from the corner. <laughs> she loved that. She Vagina's did. Vagina's big hit with aunts. Yeah, yeah, they're big fans. Uh, but the other one that's on, so he got all this stuff with, for context for the listeners. He got all of his material from what he just, what he called the Yogcast wiki. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and on the Yogcast wiki uh, for me, one of the, I think the only other quote is me saying, um, I've got a tingle in the balls, which I do not <laughs> remember saying at all. I'm sure I did. Um, but yeah. Weird. Someone out there can probably identify which video that was from. Probably a uh, post some tat or something, I, I would guess. Maybe. But, yeah. Used to say. Maybe. Yeah. Well, it was, it was a spectacular evening. Uh, a great deal of fun was had by everyone. I know I had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, Good. We arrived at the venue. <laughs> and I mean, it's up to you. We won't say what it's called, but do you, do you mind if I say what it's usually used for? Uh, yeah. I mean, if you say what it's usually used for, people will probably find it anyway. But I'm, yeah, yeah, by all means. You're okay with that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So Peter Austin, I mean, you would have thought maybe he gets married at a National Trust site, maybe at a castle. Peter Austin managed to get married at a canal museum, which, is, which I didn't realize until we arrived. <laughs> and it's even got a little museum downstairs with like uh, wax figures and stuff yeah. working on the canal. So it was while very you were exciting. On having your chorizo and prawn, uh, yeah. what are they called? Um, uh, oh. Snack snack rolls. Solovons. Yeah. <laughs> you had, you're hanging out with wax models. Yeah. And it was slightly drizzly, so you had to hang out with the wax models. <laughs> you couldn't escape the wax models or <laughs> not learn about the canal. It's not mm -hmm. to say National Trust was, uh, wasn't was didn't make an appearance on the day. Uh, the day began in a National Trust car park, of course. Yes, that's it true. It did. <laughs> I heard that you nearly got married there, actually, Peter. Is there any truth to that? What, in the car park? Yes. S uh, sadly not, no. Who oh, told you that? Man. Or are you just... You I'm think just being a dick. It'd be, it'd be an actual twat. Yeah, no. I was tempted by the National, National Trust, Trust car park, for sure. Yeah. Um, it's good. I did a wee in the corner of it. Oh, really? really nice. Yeah. Very there good. were no toilets there, and we arrived very early, so... Were you counted onto the bus by a man who looked very like me? <laughs> yes, was really certainly, was. <laughs> certainly was. Certainly was. 
<laughs> uh, tall this... Peter, as as we christened him. Oh, yeah. that's cute. Yeah, yeah. We're not even like super closely related. He's my cousin. Um, no, I like when I when we first met him, and got talking in my head. I was like, "This must be Peter's brother." Does Peter have a brother? I don't know. And then no, it was. Yeah, a lot of people thought he was my brother. <laughs> The genes are strong in your family. What can you say? They certainly are. <laughs> the best thing about the venue, though, was that there was a children's assault course out the back, which mm. as soon as I spotted it, I said, someone's going to die on this <laughs> later. Yeah. Uh, once the alcohol gets flowing. And I think only one person injured themselves. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. Um, Michael, 80 could guess. you? Yeah, I don't um, know. Could you tell us? You what, couldn't possibly who, take a guess which, which who, fool. Who got hurt? Maybe. Who I understand you saw or... it. Salt yeah. You were there, right? When it happened, someone. Yeah, I, was, I think I might have saw it happen. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was um, in just truly predictable fashion. I decided to make a proper tit of myself, and uh, me and Claudia wanted to do a time attack on the children's children's <laughs> play set. She she kind of did it quite cautiously. At this point, it was dark and raining as well, added to the danger. And I thought, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. It was going really well until the last hurdle, which was like essentially a wobbly plank of wood. <laughs> I got one foot on it, slipped, felt like rotated 90 degrees and just slammed down on it. And now my ribs really hurt. There was a, an almighty crunch when I landed. It was great. Ooh. And worst bit was, well, two things. It wasn't on video and <sighs> no one there even saw it other than Nobody Claudia. Nobody saw you die. <laughs> just, there, there's just people s- s- standing around talking. I walk over and collapse onto the grass. And I was like, what's just happened? Um, yeah. uh, but speaking of video, for those who are curious, if they want to see some of the action at Peter's wedding at the Canal Museum, then uh, <laughs> I didn't get married there, by the way. That was just the reception. Uh, then there are some clips available on various accounts on social media, Mikey's and Ashton's, I think, and some other people from the Oxcast Network. Uh, and I will post some as well. I've still not got around to posting my videos of people dancing. So oh, no. I'll just do those at some point worried about that i only discovered the existence of your video mikey this morning <laughs> it's very good isn't it yeah it's jack from cultaholic said oh i, I saw the video i thought what video <laughs> i didn't realize there was footage of me dancing on the internet but it's fine there wasn't much so it was okay <laughs> it, was good. it was good moves it was very sweet yeah i think yeah, i, I think i did I were the, going for it i reflected the tone of the day quite beautifully <laughs> yeah it was magnificent. Congratulations, Peter. Congratu- just one. Just one. Congratulations. Just, Mikey, can I have uh, one more to make it a plural? Congratulations. Never. There you okay, go. Okay, there, there we go. go. That's beautiful. Sorry. What a beautiful sentiment. And uh, <laughs> as, pretty much as soon as we're done recording, uh, you're heading off on your honeymoon as well. Well, yeah, almost. I am actually staying the night tonight. But uh, yeah, I'm going tomorrow morning. So I've literally, this is true dedication, listener. <laughs> uh, I came home from spending time with my family to record a podiatz to then go back on my wedding celebrations. So I hope you're pleased. He's a hero. Yeah. He's an absolute He's hero. Well, on that note, shall we roll into things? Yeah. Let's do it, yeah. Why not? Let's go. Let's go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Podiots, the official Vidiots podcast. Uh, it's a conversational podcast where we take some questions from you at home and obey the law of the three ers, where everybody brings a thing along to, to talk, talk about. about. I'm Ben. I'm Peter. And I'm Michael. We made it. We're back hey. on the podcast. Here Hooray. we are. Um, I, I mean, I already know how both of you are, but I'm going to ask again anyway. How are you both? I am fan bloody tastic. <laughs> I'm very good too. I've had a great time. I'm a Excellent. bit hoarse. I'm a little hoarse now. <laughs> Nay, no clip pony. clop, clip clop. Um, <laughs> but I'm also pretty pleased by mm-hmm. the stellar performance of the Podiots listening audience oh, over on absolutely. Google Maps. Absolutely. Oh yes. my God. The Podiots Enterprises grows and grows. Uh, we've had a number of people submit these to us on Twitter, but you can also just search Podiots on Google Maps and find all sorts. Uh, before we go through these, I want to give a quick update on renaming the Tyne Bridge from oh, yeah. last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got an email confirming that that had gone through, just as I had about Snappy's Pizza in Bristol, but it's not reflected on Google Maps. So I don't think that that's gone through. <sighs> right. Uh, which is sad. Uh, but uh, there we are. Some have gone through, though, haven't they, guys? 
Yes. Yeah. I'm just Googling it now, the word podiats. Hang it's on. It's just, it's every corner of the UK has some kind of podiats in it. And mm-hmm. it's even spread beyond there across the ocean to America and some other far fetched places, far flung places as well. It's, it's uh, a miraculous effort. I'll list a couple of you, uh, of them for you here. Uh, just by searching the word podiats on Google Maps, it gives you, certainly on mobile, because it seems to vary device to device, but we've got Podiats Presents Greg's House, which is the corporate <laughs> office for oh Greg's God. in Newcastle. Uh, <laughs> yes. Podiats Presents, colon, Newcastle Bridge, which isn't even spelled correctly. Um, <laughs> I can't believe that one's still there. That Surely that would have got picked up by someone. But it is literally the Tyne Bridge. It's Wow, okay. Uh, we've got Podiats Presents hyphen Hotter. Um, I'm trying to work out what that is, whether it's like the name of a club or something. Or, What's that? It looks like no, a it's just Peel state. Road Skelmersdale. Just looks like a park or something. It's in. It's in. Uh, it's it near looks, Liverpool. It's, it's some business called Hotter, but I'm not familiar with them. But well, now they've had a rebrand. Um, there's also Podiats presents Concourse, which is just down the road from there, and Podiats presents British. What is this? British <laughs> the British Lawnmower Museum. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's good. That doesn't even come up in the results. I was just on Podiats Presents uh, Hotter and there's some nearby Podiats related businesses that also came up while I was there. Um, oh, and then we've also got Podiats Presents. Oh, there are loads, actually. If you yeah. just zoom out, Podiats Presents Weetabix Corby 2, which is a food manufacturing <laughs> supply open 24 hours. Oh. Podiats is National Trust Car Park. Um, yeah. Podiats presents Wet Wang Community <laughs> Hall and Meat Facery. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. The Tynemouth Podiats Lighthouse. Podiats presents Gary Baldy Street Keith Chegwin Memorial Car Park. <laughs> <laughs> At oh, Dave on Twitter presents Podiats Feldhoyer's Meat Facery. Oh, is oh. that the one? Has that been edited again? It looks like it's a different one, maybe. Oh, God. Wow. Um, there's, have you talked about the Podiats Presents New Castell Bridge? I have, yeah. yeah. Done that that's one. That's really good. That's oh, there good are one. so many. I didn't realise there were this many. There's Podiats Presents Norwich Riverside Entertainment Centre. Podiats Presents Neil Buchanan's Marseille, yeah. uh, which is a sporting goods shop. Podiats Presents Crystal Palace Dinosaur Park. Podiats Presents Wind w- Wimondham Abbey. Uh, Podiats Presents Classics Clothing. Free Grounds Podiat's Infant School. Oh, oh my nice. god. World class education there. Oh, Have there are just Tynemouth Pierdiat's Lighthouse. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> There's Podiat's Presents Silica, uh, which <laughs> I don't know what that's about. Somewhere you can get a delicious snack, I guess, Mikey. Mm, yeah, maybe. Podiat's Presents The Hand Jobs Ink Meat Facery. Strange. Sorry? <laughs> oh no. Uh, and Podiats presents Troy Village Laundry Mat. And then where is this? There's a place called Podiats presents Beans Time, <laughs> which is <laughs> in. Uh, is this in China? Oh, Tokyo. It's in Japan. Tokyo. No. Oh Excellent. my god. We've we're on. Let's see if we can get on every continent. Maybe. Oh god. I'm, let's see what's on every continent. It's probably worth pointing out. Mikey reckons, well, I say reckons, Mikey has discovered that you can get your Google account banned for repeated vandalism, but, uh, yes. you know, just do with that information what you will. Encourage it. Yeah, I I don't know how to withdraw my suggestions. I don't know how to, <laughs> I, once they're in, I think they're locked in. Oh, no. So I don't I, know what to do I, about I, that. I genuinely, like a couple of days after doing the last podcast, I was sat on the couch with like filled with existential dread, like, oh my God, what have we done? This is terrible. And <laughs> I went around redacting some of the ones I did in an attempt to to free myself from being incarcerated in Google prison. But well, I thought if I was going to be done, I would have been done ages ago when I tried to rename that Amazon locker and the McDonald's, mm. but I wasn't. And everything since has been accepted. So I don't, I don't know where this puts me. You know? Yeah. I really want to rename Pyongyang to Pyongyang Yitz. <laughs> I think you need to do it right now. Yeah. Oh, oh don't. Do Hold on. No. Let me change to one of my 20 other emails. I've that got. might cause an actual it. international incident. Yeah. <laughs> what if this podcast is responsible for international war? Yeah. Could be. <laughs> could happen. 
could yeah. happen. There's also some great reviews under Podiots Presents Oozburn Viaduct, by the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Five-star review from Justin. Tell your friends. Five-star review from Ben Cooper. It is bridge time, and there's a Photoshopped <laughs> photo of you, Peter and I holding hands in front of it <laughs> with Mr. Blobby wearing a rules boss hat. Uh, Keith Chegwin dancing with Billy Ray Cyrus and uh, Dave Benson Phillips with his tummy out hanging upside down from a bridge. <laughs> Uh, so it's all good just yeah. impeccable that's that wow that is that is art can you have can you see the original photo there yeah yeah can you, can you tweet it out in the thread just oh, for course, just for people to see god it's excellent well done ben. i can't believe keith Chagrin was on um looks like what dancing with the stars or something uh, was he on dancing with on ice or something oh Maybe? yeah he might have been that rings a bell oh that'd be so good Keith Chagrin. naked uh where's this twitter thread oh my god keith <laughs> Sorry, Keith Chegwin <laughs> dancing on ice. Was he actually on dance? No! Yeah. yeah. Joe Pasquale and Keith Chegwin retake the ice. What a combo. Wow. Retake the ice. <laughs> Television funny man Keith Chegwin has become the latest celebrity to be to bow out of dancing on ice. That's oh, that's sad. That's sad. Do you think uh, he did it naked? I hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't watch. What's no. the point? You know, there's no stakes. Uh, well, we encourage all of you to, to keep it going and to continue to tweet us them uh, when you see it uh, or, or when you make these changes, I should say. Perhaps you need to reply to this week's episode thread on Twitter with your screenshots just so we can find it nice and easily. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, yes. it can be a bit tricky to, to track down those screenshots. But keep up the good work and be aware that you might get your Google account banned potentially so don't go too crazy and if you're renaming stuff make sure you spell it correctly <laughs> it's a big one it's a pretty big one uh, yeah we wouldn't hey, want people to get confused would we if no we for wouldn't. directions for the time bridge but also i feel like if you were to if you're going to be caught it's more likely if you can't even spell the name of the city correctly. yeah, yeah. So we'll have to blend in yeah just double just double check that first uh, but hey, if you want to support this lunacy with money, Ooh. then you can go to streamlabs.com forward slash vid po- di- podi- 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 donations. donations. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at the wrong part of my... <laughs> I always said podi- it's official there, uh, Jesus. Podi- <laughs> streamlabs.com forward slash podi- it's donations. Donate three pounds or more to get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the show and join Pod Squad for this week's episode. We've got a big old Pod Squad this week. Thank you for your generosity. Mikey's going to kick us off. We start with... Specky Becky, invite to Caroline's gangbang. Thank you. Oh, Awkward oh, circumstances nice. considering them. Uh, we got the generous can't shack it. And they say, hey, idiots, it's my birthday on the 28th. So I'm being generous. Sadly, my family got the virus and my partner is stuck abroad. So I'm on my own this year. Mm. Oh, to no. cheer myself up, I thought I'd repay you guys for the years of free laughs you've given me. Thanks. Oh, oh, thank you very much. much. Can't thank check you, it. I hope you had a lovely birthday last week. Yeah. Oh, well, let's love. We're here with you in spirit. Yeah. Yes, yes, we are. Yet another generous one with congrats, peeps, from Sam DeBarb. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. They say, listen to vidiots on my flight. And let me tell you, an eight-hour flight plus dozing off plus vidiots equals interesting dreams. I dreamt you lot were out in the streets asking for money after Mikey and the ferrets had to live in Ben's car. So there you go. And much love from SD. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Oh dear, I, I, that sounds like hell because flights, especially long ones, are already pretty horrible places, and with us nattering on your ear. No, this is quality entertainment. Entertainment. What am I saying? Am I saying? Quality entertainment. entertainment. <laughs> it's not legally good enough to be called entertainment. It's quality entertainment. I think. There we go. <laughs> Kermit the Pog. <laughs> Kellogg stopped me monking off. <laughs> 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 good mission accomplished. I hate that. <laughs> That's gross. Podiots presents Raindrop Joy. Katie Kin Solo. Peter Chew, I choose you. Oh. Evil Waffles. The Neighbours Scat. Very oh. nice, big fan mm. of that. The stupendously, ridiculously generous Otto Kano. Thank you so much. They Thank say you. we've been listening to Podiots from the beginning while we renovated our new home. You boys are the only thing that kept us sane through it. Thank you so much for all you do. Oh, thank you. You're so Lovely. welcome. I hope the renovation is complete. Mm. 
feel like listening to us while while doing it, you accidentally find yourself slipping a coat of yellow paint on the walls by the end. Every of it. room is yellow. <laughs> <laughs> a little Mister Blobby motif on this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be great. We continue. Andy, Pandy, Rock, Shandy, Big Dick, Barry, Caroline. Please take me back. On Hollies in Durham, what do? <laughs> <laughs> Go rowing or something. See the Harry Potter bit. Yes, yeah, yeah. it's nice. Look at all the old stuff. That's the that's the usual thing. This is my favourite name I think I've ever seen. <laughs> Alfred Huge Cock. <laughs> and Stephen Scordes. Thank oh. you. Thank you all. Thank you. Alfred Huge Cock is <laughs> is so simple yet brilliant. <laughs> Uh, okay, the list continues with Freddie Weber pun name. Podiots presents Hadi M. Noor, uh, which was very generous, a very generous donation. I ran a half marathon last Sunday, queued up my fav Podiots and triple jump pod eps for it. Felt like you were with me and we made it to the finish line. Hey, hey. Love you boys and Ashton very much. Idiots and triple jump till I change, baby. <laughs> and congrats, TP. Kiss, kiss. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Adi Emnor has changed. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Blobby becomes a soap actor. Peter's gaming uncle. W- was Caroline- he at the wedding? Sorry, was he at the wedding? He was. He oh, was. Fuck, you wouldn't I have recognised him. Meet him. He didn't because look he, like a, he didn't have a controller in his hand or something. No. <laughs> RGB headset. <laughs> no, because although he is, um, well, he's not blood related, but although he should be because he's my mum's brother, he's actually mm. mixed race because he was adopted by the family when he was one or something. So oh, okay. if you were expecting a Caucasian un- uncle, uh, you would have been looking at the wrong people. Oh, my son, I. I he was very, have... very drunk. He drank an entire bottle of red wine to himself, I think. I think I know who it is, because at one point on the dance floor, a uh, sort of... I'm trying to... what? Not very you... tall. Yes, not very tall. He sort of clicked his fingers. He finger-gunned in my direction. Yeah, and then I shook was standing my hand next to you. And didn't yeah. say anything, and then sort of danced at me, and then wandered <laughs> off. Was that yeah. him? Yeah. That was him. I was standing there okay. when that happened. Yeah. Oh Good. Well, I'm glad you can verify that because I know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> he was dancing with everyone. He was having a fantastic time and uh, <laughs> tried to catch the bouquet. Uh, <laughs> was, was standing at the front of the crowd of girls trying to get in there because he's just got engaged to uh, his partner. Oh. Um, and I guess he thought it was his it was their moral duty to catch it. But she was saying, <laughs> no, we've I'm because I'm already engaged. I don't need to catch it. It's not about who gets married next. She gets engaged next. So leave it. But he Amazing. was too drunk to, to care. Nice of him to donate as well. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Peter's Gaming Uncle, for three pounds. Um, <laughs> Caroline, what's the Wi-Fi code? Tiny Peter's big day. Uh, Lord Brotovich. L L L L L L L L L L S U. Oh, I can explain that one. Uh Ooh. this this is a a video that someone made me aware of on a stream recently where Loughborough Students Union <laughs> made a video. You know the na 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 yes. na <laughs> Right, but they do L L L L L It's the it's the worst thing I've <laughs> ever oh seen. Oh my god, so they just keep life. saying L and then S U oh, for the last two syllables. They do, yes, they do. Students oh. Union videos are my favourite genre. They're it's all so oh. right. <laughs> amazing. Uh Mr. Blobby Babalooney. Mighty Dwarven Cervix, Ooh. Mr. Macca, Big Titty Jesus 42, Don Echo 7, Snap Ben's to Mikey Pizza. Oh, it's Snappy's Tomato Pizza. I got it. Yeah, but with go. all of our names. Yeah. Uh, Midwestern Kevin, who was generous and said, well, we sort of generous. There may have been a <laughs> currency conversion issue, but we've sort, given you sort your... Sort of generous. <laughs> <laughs> it was generous, but not what we ordinarily call generous. Wow. And yet we will read the message in case it was a dollar to pounds conversion issue. Uh, Midwestern Kevin says, Hi guys, been listening since the start and never had a good time to donate. After listening to the podcast all day while moving around urine samples, Ooh. I felt that this is the best time. You guys have helped me more than you can imagine. Well, thank you for being sort of generous there. <laughs> thank you, Midwestern God. Kevin, thank for being you. mid-generous. <laughs> <laughs> it was very generous. Um, yes, thank you. We appreciate yeah. it very much. Tyne Moth Pier Diot's Lighthouse. Ooh. Podiots presents Pro Trainer, Just Keep Swimming Ash, 
and Dwayne the Plops Johnson. Nice. Excellent. Very good. Uh, finally, we have the very generous sex young homosexual who said, <laughs> boys, if we donated specifically for it, can we fundraise to bring you overseas for a meet and greet? <laughs> now, it doesn't specify which overseas uh, is intended here. Europe? Maybe. I mean, we we haven't even done a meet and greet in the UK. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> Let's start with Stoke on Trent and move up. Yeah, we need to do Stoke on Trent first. Yeah. Or if you work out which Dick and Dom performance we're going to. Oh god, yeah. We'll see you there. Yeah. But you you never know. We're not gonna say. Uh Ooh. Dick My Chunker. Amy Wix does not shop at Wix. <laughs> Scissors in my daddy's ass. Wix, 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 Wix. Scissor me, daddy ass. <laughs> uh hmm. N- n- no, oh, I th- not vidiots, but podiots instead of bix. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Uh, you've seen the price of a lure pack. <laughs> <laughs> and the next one? 20 quid a pack. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. That's I like that. Fun. Thank you. You've seen the price yeah. of a lure pack. <laughs> The Booper Smash Brothers, Caroline, I'm in Wisconsin, the Tesco What Sells Horse Cum, Stroke Off Trent, Stroke On Trent, Stroke Strong Trent, the Bond's name, Bond names the James, Bames Nons having a strong call a Bondulance. Those are all separate donations. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, that is your pod squad for this week. Thank you, everyone, for your generosity. Uh, we're half an hour into the podcast now, practically, <laughs> and it's time for question one. Oh. We begin with a question from Hollowwise Eyes at Hollow Eyes on Twitter. And they ask, someone's come up, come up to you and tells you to, quote unquote, do the thing. What would you do in response on the spot? That's a good question. I like that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I, 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 I mean, I, I don't want to, you know, take the, the lowbrow route, but is it just fart for me? Am I more than that? Or am I just a farty man? <laughs> am I just no, a farty? No, that's all you are. <laughs> is, that, is that my legacy? Is that what I'm leaving behind? It feels like at this point, and I feel like I should just come to terms with that. <laughs> yeah, possibly. You uh, could diversify rip- into belches if you felt like it. Could, yeah, yeah, there's something more grotesque. I mean, farts are grotesque, but burps for some reason. There's, there's, there's no joy in a, in a birch. You never laugh at a, a bell. A bell? My God. A bell beater, <laughs> Can't <burp>. even say it. <laughs> like, farts are funny. Burps are just uh, obnoxious. Yeah. 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 Hmm. I think. Maybe I'll um, pull out. Maybe I need to start going out armed with a, a stab proof vest and a knife at all times. All right, here you go. Have a, have a stab. <laughs> Uh, if someone asked me to do the thing, I would maybe be hit by a car there and then. <laughs> They're speeding that, at you in the street. Do the thing. Yeah, um, that either be... that or maybe I don't know. Say your vagina is beautiful. Um, yeah. Certainly, if my father-in-law asked me to, I would do that for him. <laughs> um, if someone said it to me, I would immediately get in my car and drive to wherever Peter is. Right. And hit you wouldn't him. say hashtag shit games for wankers. No, well, see, finally, I think that's that's sort of been shed a little bit. I haven't said yeah. it for years. People oh. do still want me to say nerds, even though I yeah, haven't said that for, for just as long. You occasionally uh, get shit games for wankers in the comments for worst games ever. but Oh, not, do we? I don't know. Yeah, I'm mean, really only every, every once in a blue moon, but yeah. Yeah, that one's, that, that's, it's tr- I'm trying to kill it. I've been trying to kill it for some time. Let it, <laughs> let it die. Uh, I'm doing sports stuff now. I'm on a different catchphrase. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That that would be the, the, the current one. We were actually able to capitalize on this one and sell a lot of t-shirts. So you know that was there that's nice. Rather than what culture where they were like <laughs> merch. You're not you're not the wrestling channel. What are you talking? About? <laughs> Get fucked. Would you uh, like to buy a, a board game which is no, <laughs> spelling mistakes which and stuff? Might on not it. have a dice in it. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like the, like when I started working at What Culture till when I left, there was just an an unmoving stack of car, of, of board games at the back of the office. It was spectacular. Oh, I wish, I wish it was some sort of. Oh no, I probably can't say. <laughs> I probably, I probably can't say. No. I can't say. I think it might be litigious. Okay, <laughs> I'll type it in the chat. Hang on. Right. Okay. Wait. Well, let's all we'll all review this. I'll send this on to my lawyer. Oh God! Please let's know. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. Do you yeah. Agree though. 
Yes. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. That's I, cool. I think I was told that explicitly. Yeah, well, there, there it is. That's oh my- why there were so many. It feels like it's worse now we haven't said anything, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was a sex thing. <laughs> oh, well, no, that's not what in every thing. single box. Yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, there we are. Maybe, oh, maybe that. <laughs> Fantastic. There you go. If you if you see us on the street and ask us to do the thing, you know what you're going to get now. You did. Who would like to to start us off with a thing? Hmm. I've got a thing. <gasps> yes, hastily you do? prepared thing. Yeah. Um. <gasps> Can't believe this has never come up before. Can't believe no one has ever sent this to us before. But by chance, I don't even know where I saw this. This happened about two weeks ago and I added it to my little things document on my phone. Mm. Uh, I came across a very special famous fish. Um, This is fish was described. uh, This is a weird Wikipedia. This is directly from Wikipedia. Uh, A fish described as Britain's biggest and best loved common carp. Um, okay. The, okay. the name of this fish, Benson. Excellent. Good name. <laughs> how how has no one told us about f- fish Benson fish ships before? Why has oh. this not happened? I don't know why <laughs> this is news to me. But Benson, 1984 to the 4th of August 2009, was Britain's biggest and best loved common carp. Benson's popularity was such that she was, oh, she oh, was oh, caught oh. 63 times in 13 years. Whoa. Uh, wow. Although the accessibility that made her popular was also the cause of controversy among angling's elite. No. She's also been referred to as the people's fish. This is what they used to call Lady Di, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's what, the, that's what Dwayne the Plops Johnson was called as well. Yeah, that's true. Um, and was voted by readler, by readers by was voted by readers of Angler's Mail as Britain's favourite carp in two thousand and five. Brilliant. Who else was in the running? Do we know? Uh, oh, there is a citation link, so I might be able to. Let me uh, hang on. This is really important. <laughs> oh no! It just goes to an article about the death where I think uh, oh, the author referred to. Yeah, she died. <laughs> Well, I told you it died in 2009. Oh, yeah, yeah I you just... did. You did. Or just, did you think I those were just the that years that, that it was the best fish? She was famous, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And where years active. after that. <laughs> She's retired now. <laughs> um, so, uh, the fish who was... Oh, yeah. Have I, no. The fish who was a female was originally one of a pair. Her original companion, Hedges, disappeared in a flood of the River Neen ben- in oh, 19- my and Hedges. God. No. Yeah. Named after fucking cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. Um, disappeared in a flood of the River Neen in 1998. Oh. Both fish were named due to a hole in Benson's dorsal fin that resembled a cigarette burn oh, uh, wow. in a reference to Benson and Hedges. <laughs> At her peak weight in 2006, she weighed 64 pounds and two ounces, which is 21.1 kilograms. Oh, my God. God. Benson died on the 4th of August, aged 25. Wow. At the time of her death, she weighed the same as a large dog and was worth £20,000. The owner of the lake where she lived alleged that she was accidentally poisoned by anglers using uncooked tiger nuts as bait. No <laughs> evidence points to the contrary. See section on death below. What, what, are, ti- what are tiger nuts? Uh, just a type of nut. Uh, Cy- Cy- Cyperus esculentus is a species of plant in the sedge family, widespread across much of Europe. That's uh, not helped at all. I didn't know any of those words. <laughs> um, I think it's just a, a sort of nut. Earth oh. almonds. Mm. Earth apparently. almonds. Okay. Yeah, which I've also never heard of, but they're just some kind of nut, I think. I think the nuts might be the root of the plant, but yeah. Um... So the date, uh, the death though was con- uh, controversial. See section on death below. I'll get to that. Uh, another possible cause of death was the complications during egg production. So there's now a section called Fame. Benson lived in the Kingfisher Lake at the Bluebell Lakes complex at Tansor, just outside Oundle in Northamptonshire. She was one of approximately 150 carp in Bluebell Lakes, which are managed to provide the best environment for growth potential of the fish. 
Steve Broad, editor of UK Carp magazine, ascribed Benson's fame to, quote, her accessibility. Among keen anglers, there are only... There are about only 20 carp that can be seriously called household names. Benson was near the top of that league. Near the top of that league, it Jesus, says. Who's top carp? Um, the thing that made Benson famous was her accessibility. Unlike other big carp, she was a day ticket fish. Anyone could go along and try to catch her. Oh, poor Benson. Jesus. I know. Just 63 times, hook through the mouth, thrown oh. back in. Um, I don't know if you guys have ventured to the uh, oops the article while I've been talking, but here is a very small image of Benson, uh, which would be good if you could pop that in the. Oh, hang on. Oh, no, that's, uh, that's that's on my clipboard. That didn't copy properly. <laughs> we <laughs> I can't sent say that to what Amy. That was. No, absolutely not. Not yet. But I, that will be become just, clear. Uh, both on Mikey social media. and I just tweeted a generic carp i think oh well here's the carp here's a photo that's her the thread that's her damn she's she thick she thick she big thick she's been eating cooked tiger nuts um so benson's record of being caught so often masks her unpredictability here's a quote uh from i think steve broad there was a period when benson was caught every monday for six weeks and then it seemed she disappeared for the next 12 months oh my god um However, this very accessibility made the fish controversial among the sport's elite. Every day, ang- everyday anglers loved her because there was a chance they could have their photo taken with one of the big fish. Some serious anglers did not like her because she was open to everyone. <laughs> then we've got a final section here called Death. Oh. The Daily Te- Telegraph reported in August 2009 that the fish had been, quote, poisoned. A quantity of uncooked nuts, which are toxic to fish who swell up because they cannot process them, were found nearby on the bank. Owner of Bluebell Lakes, Tony Bridgefoot, 53, said he feared the fish had been killed by irresponsible anglers. It seems her demise was caused by the introduction of foods that are harmful to fish. It's since been confirmed the most likely cause of death was not nut poisoning, but rather reproductive complications due to gravidity. Which, in biology and human medicine, gra- gravidity and parity are the number of times a woman is or has been pregnant and carry the pregnancies to a viable gestational age. Um, so I guess, I think I think what they're saying is Benson flipped too much. Right. Um, Benson fucked uh, to death. <laughs> okay. Her um, vagina was beautiful. Her, fish her vagina, vagina was, was beautiful. Be- well, oh, no, I think by the end it probably wasn't. Um, <laughs> her vagina was ravaged. And um, but by she had a good nuts. time. Yes, by nuts. Too many nuts. Uh, Benson's it's... successor as a popular and very large common carp may not live too far away from the fish's former haunt. The same complex where Benson lived boasts an, a lot of promising forty-pound fish. There's one, the Z fish. It's called that is ounces under fifty pounds and still growing. So one day, perhaps we'll have. A fish called Chegwin or something. I'd love that. Buchanan. That I, I think all those fish Marlborough. are now like desperately dying in an attempt to not be big enough to be warranted a, 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 <laughs> yeah. essentially a, a photo opportunity for anglers. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. So God, there's a ranking with... of the top 50 greatest carp of all oh, time. Oh, we found Jeez. it. I, I'm curious about these other carp. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put, put the link in here. Do you want to just hear the top spot? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> number one is Mary. <laughs> okay. Um, there's a brief synopsis on their history. One of the most iconic shots of a generation is pictured here, with Terry Hearn holding this baby whale. N- Sorry? I mean, That's it's not, not a carp. It is a carp. This, this baby whale known as Mary from Raysbury, he caught it at a new British record of 55 pounds. The year was 1996, and we are sure that many of you will remember it very well. Do yeah, you remember where you were when Mary was caught? We love <laughs> nothing more than looking at lovely old shots of truly breathtaking looking carp. Is what it wow, says number four is called Caravan Park Linear. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that. You can't. No, you have to say Caravan Park uh, Queer now, you I think. You do, yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> Yeah. Number seven's Mary's mate. <laughs> is that what it's called? Mary's mate. It is, yeah, it is. I'm just looking at some of these names. They're really oh, good. Great. Yeah. 
It doesn't have all 50 on here, does it? No, it doesn't. The article just stops at, just at what's 10. that, 10? No comments. Well, time to oh. change that. Can we comment like f- as vidiots? No, can't. Yeah, Rubbish. but where comment. the fuck are the other 40? <laughs> How old is this post? It's like a fucking what culture article. Everything's split up, isn't it? Carpology.net. <laughs> God. All right, there's part two. God, they're really making you work for this. Is there a part two? There's a part two there. Oh. Wait, now I've got a Google... I'm going to have to find part five, because I don't know if Mary actually is number one. One's just surely... called client. <laughs> There's one called the it's parrot. It's a business relationship. Parrot. Herman. <laughs> the brute. One. <laughs> One's called shoulders. <laughs> Tall, toddless <laughs> leather. What? <laughs> this is silly. Who? Someone spelt basil with a Z. That's crazy. What are they doing over there? This is Absolutely Petals. Busy. Dink. <laughs> the bishop. <laughs> the pug. Found. Fat lady. Wow. The real. The court Clarissa. <laughs> oh, wow. Clarissa. Clarissa, they found it. That's a the beautiful real. name. The real. The real that found. The, the court Clarissa, they found it finally. I, d- I didn't even know there was one famous carp, let alone 50. Jesus. This is oh, incredible. Dustbin here. <laughs> Nutsy uh, mirror. Dustbin. <laughs> Bite mark. He's a great. The Annie, I think, is very good because the, the, the prefix of the is great. <laughs> Dink. I caught Annie yesterday. What? what the Annie? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> the Annie. Wow. God, there's I, fishing's big business, isn't it? People it love is. this stuff. I never expected there to be a magazine dedicated to like one type of fish. That's This is so good. This is very good. Uh, you can buy Carpology magazine. It's five pound seventy five, issue two hundred and twenty six. Assuming what? there was one every month. That's a lot of months. Let hang on. I think it was um was like 10 once years. a guest a guest uh publication on Have I Got News for You? I've definitely there was some Carp magazine, Carp Monthly or something was on there. Eighteen sure. years. Wow. Wow. Eighteen happy, happy years. Yes. I, I, what changes? I caught the fish. <laughs> It's, I don't get it. Don't get it, it got bigger and then it died. <laughs> oh my god! I wonder if they have well, centerfold fish. You know? <laughs> oh yeah, it's oh. like a top shelf magazine. Get a load of the Annie. <laughs> oh, hello. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed learning all about Benson. Yes, I did. Thank you, thank yeah, you, Peter. Big, big fan of Benson. And yeah. edges, let's not forget. Like 12 tabs open for carp now. <laughs> it's all carp. Those. <laughs> Dave Benson, fish lips. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much, Peter. You're very welcome. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure I found that myself, but if someone did send that to me, apologies for not crediting you. <laughs> Would you boys like a second question? Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, this one comes from Soldier First Class at Rainmaker XZI, XCIV. And they've, 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 they've brought to my attention a very important anniversary for us here on Podiots. Oh. It's officially past the third anniversary of the introduction of Meatface. Oh, wait, no, we did talk about this, didn't we? Because <laughs> I think we, 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 when we were doing the, the episode Roundup, uh, we mentioned, oh, it's three years since Meatface. Well, now it's, now it's at the beginning of the podcast. But, um, okay. They you mean ask, at the end of the, when we when we did uh, this week on Podiots, did we mention? I, it? I assume the podcast episode was called uh, Meat Face. It couldn't have been called anything else. Yeah, probably. Um, but, um, don't worry, that's not all they have. There's don't worry, that's not all. In your wildest imaginations, what animal, person, or object would you like to be enshrined in sausage meat to be paired with the legendary Meat Face? <laughs> in sausage meat. Specifically, yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, to carry on, the, you know, the, the form of meat face. Mm. I think whatever it is, it's got to be rendered really crappily. Like, it can't... It, like maybe, maybe a highly detailed um, Van Gogh painting made in sausage would be impressive, but it wouldn't be nearly as funny as, like, a wonky-looking cat. Oh, yeah. a cat would be great. Big, fat, bulbous cat, little legs and little ears <laughs> and whiskers. I'd love that. And it then has to be discovered by uh, a woman and her two daughters after buying it in a in Iceland or whatever. It's not it's not like made to go on a wall or for us to have. It's just we commission it. It then gets packaged up and just stuck in a chest freezer. Yeah, in Iceland. Like a, like a golden ticket. 
Yeah. yeah. I wonder if there's ever um, been any other meat members that have been like created but just been cooked rather than <laughs> photographed and remembered. Yeah. Mm. Good question. Oh. My children oh. wanted to eat it. <laughs> oh, so I stuck it back in the freezer. Uh, but you never know. It makes you think, doesn't it? You don't know what's been going on in the factory. <laughs> I mean, what? You never, you I don't, don't know. You don't ever know. Does it make me think? Not really. Someone's just squashed a face together. It's probably still good to eat if you really want to. Oh, yeah. It's quite funny. Uh, yeah. If I was going to have a meat face, I would like it to be accompanied by potato grimaces, which oh, works no. on a couple of levels because it could either be... A potato smiley that's gone really wrong and it looks like Grimace, the McDonald's mascot. <laughs> or it could just be a really sad looking potato smiley. A potato upsetty. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh a potato thicky. <laughs> Grimace deep. I like thick. it. I would quite like, especially if we are having children perhaps discover this in the packet, I would like um, the sausage meat to be reformed back into the shape of a pig. Uh, mm. just to really drive home the nature of the industry and make them, you know, have to do a serious question. Do I do I want to support this industry or not? If if I do, fine. If I don't, maybe not. Here's a pig. This is where your sausage came from. I mean, I say that. It's probably horse meat, to be honest. Yeah, if it's sausage. realistically. Um, so perhaps, uh, you know, in the shape of a rat or a horse uh, or wherever the the meat may have come from. But um, yeah, that's what I'd do. Just try and traumatise those children as much as possible. Of course, you got to. Um, I, I just I want to have a look at what Richmond sausages are like, known, renowned as being the worst, the worst of the sausages, right? Ah, oh, it's all just chemicals, damn it. Rusk. There's rusk in <laughs> Richmond sausages. Cute. Mm, rusk. Yum. Lovely. Isn't that delicious, Probably delicious a lot of water flavor. as well. Yeah, it is mostly water. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. It's just wet rusk. <laughs> what is it? What was it called? Um, reticulated or like the reconstituted? Oh, reconstituted reconstituted yeah. rusks. <laughs> Lovely. Juicy rusks. Yes. Mm. There we go. That's. Uh, I, I. I would be over the moon if I found any of those inside a pack of sausages. So me too. When factory workers get to it. Be thrilled. Yeah. Who would like to present their thing next? I would. I'm, I would love I, 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 I kind of, I realised then, I, I, I led, that, that, led that directly to you then, Ben. <laughs> I'll take it. person that's not me. I'll take the oh, ball. Oh, sorry, Ben. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, so my thing is about the greatest wrestler of all time. And this sort of did the rounds at the beginning of May because this man's birthday was celebrated via a Google Doodle and a lot of people were curious as to who he is. And fortunately, someone did a fantastic Twitter thread uh, called, well, the username is at names or name Shiv, N-A-M-E-S-H-I-V. They have a Patreon as well because this is a very good rundown and I will shout out at the end. But here we go. Are you ready to learn about the world's greatest wrestler? Yes, Hell, yes. I'll send you a photo first, just so you know who we are talking about. There he is. Oh, no. He, there he is. Uh, oh, look at him. What a dude. So here we go. Okay, since Google has done a doodle for his birthday today, and some people are wondering who he is, gather around, children. It is story time. A story that starts with a secret. Superheroes do exist in real life. Well, one did. Mm. Meet Ghulam Mohammed Baksh B- Butt. His last name is Butt, a.k.a. the Great Gamma, or Gamma, I'm not sure. But who was Gamma? One way of answering is to say he was the greatest wrestler that has ever lived, maybe the most formidable unarmed combatant to ever live. But put it this way, an entire armed mob intent on mass murder once fled him in mortal terror. More on that in a bit. Wow. Did I say he was a wrestler? That's not quite right. He was THE wrestler. He specialised in the subcontinental style called ooh, Pehelwani, which is extremely demanding, and Gama was extremely good. How good? Well, he started in 1895 and wrestled all the way till 1952 or 1955, depending on the source. In this time, he fought basically every wrestler and many non-wrestlers of note across the world, reportedly over 5,000 fights. In these 50 years of bouts, Gama lost zero times. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. I'm going to repeat that. In a fighting career of over 50 years in two separate centuries that included him going country to country challenging famous fighters to face him, Gama lost zero fights. 
What kind of behemoth of a man does this, you ask? A five foot seven behemoth, actually. What? He's small. Oh, t- well, small, kind of small. Probably quite tall for the time. Mm. The stories of Gama are so numerous and ridiculous it's like a comic book, only the adventures appear as newspaper articles instead. For instance, Gama got his start at age 10, when he entered a strongman tournament being held by a king and placed in the top 15. Now, being 5 foot 7, <laughs> Gama starts off as someone who isn't taken seriously. All superheroes have obstacles to overcome. While still a teenager. Sorry, I just want to go back to the fact that a king held a strongman <laughs> competition. Of course. That's the kind of leadership we need. Naturally, yes, that was important. We must know who the strongest is. <laughs> Uh, Gama uh, starts off as someone who isn't taken seriously. All superheroes have obstacles to overcome. While still a teenager, he faces the legendary giant Rahim Bakhsh Sultaniwala, yes, for the subcontinental crown. Gama has no chance. And then Gama is crowned champ. By 1910, Gama has beaten everyone in the subcontinent. Everyone. And can't everyone. He's literally <laughs> fought. He's fought everyone. children <laughs> and can't even find opponents anymore. So he sails to London. Again, his height leads to mocking and not being taken seriously, to the point he wasn't getting into tournaments. Gama decides to start issuing challenges. Gama's... Hang on. Ga... No, this is written a bit weird. Gama's swore to throw any three wrestlers of any weight class within 30 minutes, it says. Nobody came forward. Promoters thought he was bluffing. So Gama started issuing challenges to individual famous wrestlers saying he would beat them or pay them the prize money and leave for home. This time he found a challenger. The famous American wrestler Benjamin Doc Roller agreed to take on this upstart. The bout lasted 1 minute 40 seconds before Gama pinned Doc. Doc, wow. shocked, demanded a rematch. In the rematch, Doc went all out and lasted nine whole minutes. The next to accept was the legendary Stanislaus Zabisco. And I've heard of, I think, Larry Zabisco, which is his son, who's very famous. This time, the stakes were the John Bull Belt and £250. On the 10th of September 1910, Gama and Zabisco faced off in what became a two-hour, 36-minute match. At the cool. one minute mark, Zabisco was taken down. He remained there for the next two hour and 35 minutes. <laughs> what? It says. Wait, what? How did, what? <laughs> so, Surely that's the end of it. I think he was just trying to escape for two hours. Must have been riveting <laughs> to watch. Really exciting stuff. Oh, I see. So he was just maybe on top of him. Yeah. And he wasn't to backing pin down. Him. Yeah, but he couldn't. <laughs> Uh, a rematch was fixed for September the 17th. On the appointed day of the rematch, the legendary Stanislaus Zabisco, terror of the ring, feared by so many, no-showed rather than face oh. Gama. Gama was now a big deal. He fought Roller again and threw him 13 times in 15 minutes. Now, for a wholly different reason, Gama was uh, now starting to run into his old problem again. Nobody wants to fight him. At one point, he offered to fight 20 men in a row. Nobody agreed. Gama had discovered, as Mike Tyson would almost a century later, that when you're a professional fighter that other professional fighters are physically terrified of, it can be a, it can be both a blessing and a curse. Finally, mm. nothing left to prove, Gama left the West to return home. While he sails, it's worth taking a moment to ask, what made him so great? Well, for one, he was ridiculously strong, superhero strong. On one occasion, he lifted a 1,200 kilogram stone in a feat so famous, the stone is in a museum. <laughs> and then there was his regimen. Gama used to do 5,000 squats and 3,000 push-ups every day. Now, I don't no. know how much of this is real, um, <laughs> but I will continue reading. Part of his training regimen was later adopted by Bruce Lee. His daily diet? It included 10 litres of milk, six desi chickens, it says, and a half, uh, and a pound and a half of crushed almond paste made into a tonic drink. I have me rice cake, I have me fish, <laughs> then at two o'clock I have a rice cake, <laughs> at three o'clock I have fish. Fish and a rice cake. Fish and a rice cake. <laughs> at four o'clock I have fish. <laughs> it's very good. Ben, have you heard that? Have you seen no, that video? No, I haven't. No, I thought no, maybe it sounded like you haven't heard no, it. No, I haven't heard that one. Worth, it's worth uh, worth the watch. Okay. Yeah, just search fish in a rice cake. It's, I think it's a, new, it's a Sunderland man as well. Oh, this sounds very northern. All right. I will look it up. Uh, back to Gama. Yeah. Anyway, Gama gets back and after another famous series of bouts against his old adversary, keeps going all the way until the 1950s or so, though it gets harder and harder to find people willing to fight him. Except one special challenger, Zabisco. Yes, Stanislaus is back. 
42. Yes. The answer to life, the universe and everything. Well, at least according to Douglas Adams. It is also how many seconds Abisko lasted. After this, Karma oh. found it increasingly hard to find opponents, so he turned his attention to one closer to home, the British Empire. <laughs> Gama now began campaign now began campaigning for things like free rail travel for poor Indians. He challenged the British government of India that he would stop a moving train with his bare hands if they'd make rail travel free on a one uh, on an 11 kilometer stretch. The government refused. Fast forward to 1947, the British are leaving. Partition is happening. Religious riots and murder mobs all over the country, both countries. Now, Gama was a Muslim living in Lahore in what was now Pakistan. Seeing what was happening, he vowed to help the minority Hindus nearby. So Gama, now an old man, took a few wrestlers from his school and went to a Hindu neighbourhood, even as an armed mob descended on it. Gama placed himself before the mob. This is where things went from scary to legendary. The mob asks Gama to move. Gama points out he was about to ask them the same thing. The mob asks if he think if he thinks he can fight them all. Gama, Ga, sorry, Gama asks if they think they can all fight him. There is an impasse <laughs> for a moment, and then it happened. A leader comes at Gama. Gama slaps him. Depending on which account you believe, this either a broke his jaw, b knocked him unconscious, or c killed him outright. <laughs> all accounts agree he went flying. Gama smiled at the mob and asked who was next. Next, the mob fled. Yes, I know, it says. So if you're wondering what sort of man gets a Google Doodle for his birthday 144 years after the fact just for being a wrestler, well, now you know. This sort of man, Superman, and his name is Gama. And there we go. Wow. That's the story what of Gama. If you that. go to patreon.com forward slash Shiv Ramdas, you can support the author of that excellent thread. Uh, this is a very grainy photo, but I think you can sort of see kind of how stacked your boy Gama is for, you know, the very early 1900s. Jesus. He's just, Ooh. he's just, he's just, he looks like Golem, the Pokemon. He's kind yeah. of built like a two-year-old. But <laughs> he's like yeah, a really it makes him look muscular squat. toddler. <laughs> Uh, oh my god but there we are that's gama who apparently slapped a man so hard he might have killed him at some point i really like that first picture um because it reminds me of one second the time that um when parliament was being prorogued uh that someone grabbed the mace <laughs> <Yes>. and uh <laughs> that's everyone his, went mental about it his big mace yeah I wonder where he got that from in fact, to it's be from, honest, the, it's always there. the one in Parliament is probably his. The British government just took it with them. <laughs> yeah. It does. Oh God, what a dude. Thank you. That was a brilliant write-up as well. Yeah, yeah did a great job was, with that. Yeah. I found it very interesting. So there you go. Gama, G-A-M-A, -A, if you want to read about him. How did handlebar moustaches become the hallmark of a strong man? Like... It works, but who started that and why is it so prevalent? I don't it's know. Great. It's good. It it's worked for the Iron thing. Sheik in the 80s as well. Same moustache. Same I'm build, gonna, actually. <laughs> might, as, might be him. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start I'm gonna start growing one out. You so should. Look strong and powerful. I think you should. <laughs> It'll work, right? Uh, would you boys like a question? Mm -hmm. Ooh, let's go for... This one comes from Chloe Elizabeth at All Fruit Cake on Twitter. They say, We've had Domino's Double Decadence, the Chicken Big Mac, and KFC's Double Down Burger. Have any other gimmicky fast foods stuck in your mind? Oh. And if so, which do you hate? And are there some that you wish stuck around? Big love and congratulations to TP. Oh, um, thank you. I'm I'm going to go straight. In. I'm I'm not going fast food because I'm I'm not admittedly not that much of a, a fast food extraordinaire. But coloured ketchup. Oh, the was... green ket the, and the purple ketchup. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want that back. I want that back more than anything. It did, surely legally you can't sell that anymore. I don't. Maybe it has I to be think like... there's a reason. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe like just, I I don't care about the flavour of it. I just want brightly coloured condiments. So like maybe like asparagus sauce instead of tomato sauce that sounds actually that does sound nice yeah i could go for that <laughs> no i just want to <laughs> <laughs> i'm, I'm on to something here i just i just i just want to be able to dollop some bright colors onto my chips and act like i'm a three-year-old again yeah fair Over enough yeah yeah the i am um, the tastiest bit though i'm also not really a fast food extraordinaire and i i don't um 
I never really, I would never, I've ne- hello, I would never order the gimmicky thing. I, I always just get the same thing or one of two orders. You know, that's just how I, how I live my life in fast food restaurants. However, I do still have an opinion about one thing that happened. Remember when uh, McDonald's brought back the Szechuan sauce because of um, Rick and Morty? Yes. And yeah. people were absolutely were just going insane and being obnoxious and annoying and just standing in McDonald's abusing staff because the Szechuan sauce had run out. Um, that's definitely one that I would never have uh, had, like, brought back if, you know, if I'd had a crystal ball. Yeah. Uh, and if it was my choice to do so, <laughs> uh, to make that decision. Yeah, that was terrible. Really, really annoying. Yeah, um, and also, I'm fairly confident in saying as... Someone who now has to quietly be a fan of Rick and Morty. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm fairly confident that that whole movement, pretty much between that and Pickle Rick, (laughs) single-handedly destroyed Rick and Morty's public image. Yeah, it had Uh, a really good reputation. Because it's still really good. The last season was excellent and I really liked it, but my God, it just became... You you have to be ashamed of it now. Yeah. 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 It's a shame. Such a shame. I remember just thinking when I first saw it, this is... The show will go far. You know, yeah. it's different. It's cutting edge. It's uh, very self-aware. But no, uh, oh. the fandom ruined it, as they often do. Yeah. In fact, in in other Pokemon, uh, in other McDonald's-related news, the Pokemon uh, stuff where, like, there were people would be going in and, like, getting mad about Happy Meal extras. I don't yeah. remember exactly what it was. Was it little toys? or Adults little... would go in and buy all the Happy Meals. I think it was Pokemon cards, and they would film cards, themselves it? opening it and just throwing the God. food away. Yeah. Oh, and there were no Pokemon cards left for the children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Knobs. Tragic. Uh, quick recommendation, by the way. If you enjoy Rick and Morty, one show that's very similar that hasn't had its reputation tarnished quite so publicly yet is Solar Opposites. If you can get hold of that, I highly recommend it. It's from okay. Justin Roiland and he oh. uses those two voices that you love. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah and it's about oh, yeah. aliens. It's good. It's a good show. I really like it. Oh, cute. Well, hopefully it stays pure. So is this question about things we wouldn't have back or things we would uh, or just I general opinions? Both. Have, have any yeah. stuck in your mind? Okay. Uh, and, and do you hate them or do you wish they'd stuck around? I tried the double decadence. No, not double decadence. The, the double down, the KFC one, where instead of buns, it's two oh, chicken patties and then it has like bacon and cheese and sauce in the middle. It was actually kind of disgusting. It made me very sad. It was the greasiest and saltiest thing I think I've ever eaten. And I re- and I really like KFC and I did not enjoy that at all, uh, which was a shame. Uh, I was also very tempted by... I think it might have been Pizza Hut that did a partnership with KFC and it was basically just a margarita but instead of tomato sauce it had KFC gravy and then it just had uh, sweet corn and popcorn chicken on top of it and I never ordered it before it finished because for the same reason that you say the the same thing that you said Peter uh, in that I usually go for the same thing because I don't get takeaway all the time and when I do, I don't want to gamble on something I might not like. So yeah, I exactly. just, just yeah. go for something I know I'll enjoy. I, I think we're, we're, we're missing out here because I've just Googled some other weird fast foods. And America seem, I mean, America's obviously the king of it. Of course. But there's some demented things here. Um, looks like Pizza Hut did a Doritos Crunchy Crust pizza <laughs> oh, at some point. Me. Oh. Which is literally, it's just, it's just handfuls of crushed Doritos lining a pizza. It looks like barbed wire fencing. There's a double down dog, which is a hot dog with a chicken bun. <laughs> oh, there was the black bread at like Burger King or something. Uh, and it turned everyone's shit green. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. The black, the charcoal bun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Uh, Cheetos quesadilla. Wow. We are truly missing out on some cuisine here. I'm always tempted by those whenever I see them. I think that that's really fucked up. That 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 you know that's got to be good, and then I never do it. <laughs> yeah, it's just self punishment. Yeah, it is. <laughs> what flavor of diarrhea do I fancy today? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have green, please. <laughs> oh, oh god. Man. Well, thank you, boys, and we shall move on to my thing. Hell yeah! So I've got a tale of how one of Britain's. Oh, uh, uh, 
I, I, I wouldn't say most historic. I guess it depends on who you ask. But one of Britain's most iconic landmarks, uh, a true institution, and, and you know, like re- very famous. And I, th- I believe Peter, you're a big fan of it as well. Mm. Want to talk about the story of how it, it changed hands um, at auction? Oh, okay. Like most of the bargain hunters who packed the Palace Theatre in Salisbury on the afternoon of September 21st, 1915, uh, so there's there's an estate sale going on for for someone who passed away, Cecil Chubb was looking for a deal. (laughs) Legend says the wealthy 39-year-old lawyer had been dispatched by his wife to purchase a set of dining chairs. But that all changed when auctioneer Howard Frank announced lot number 15. Stonehenge with about 30 acres, two rods, 37 perches of adjoining downland. Wow. So in, in the turn of the century, uh, you could have bought arguably like a, just a massive chunk of history of England. Wow. Mm-hmm. It may have been hard to imagine the world's most famous. Oh, it says here, the world's most famous prehistoric monuments. There you go. That's it. Yeah, now, I, I think that's fair. Yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Now a UNESCO World Heritage Site for sale to the highest bidder, but that's what happened when the extensive estate of Sir Edmund Antrobus went under the gavel just months after his death a century ago. What may be even harder to imagine is that Frank found no eager buyers when he opened the bidding at £5,000. Wow. Uh, which I think translate it, it, that sounds cheap, but that's £400,000 in today's money. Oh. Still... Arguably, very good going. Would you like to have a house or would you like to buy Stonehenge? (laughs) I'll take the stones, please. Uh, uh, The auctioneer said, surely someone will offer me £5,000. The auctioneer intoned after being greeted with silence. As he peered out of the crowd, Frank was relieved to finally see a hand raised in the air. And eventually there was a little bit of back and forth until the bidding reached the lofty highs of £6,000 before hitting another lull. Gentlemen, it is impossible to value Stonehenge, Frank said. Surely £6,000 is per bidding. But if no one bids me any more, I shall set it at this price. Will no one give me any more than £6,000 for Stonehenge? And then at that point, Chubb piped up. He thought, no, (laughs) this is mine. (laughs) When the auctioneer finally lowered his his gavel, Stonehenge had been sold for a mere six thousand six hundred pounds, which is is that that's roughly five hundred thousand pounds in today's money, which I think is a, it's a good deal still. Very Chubb, good deal. Yeah, I'd buy that. I, I, I would buy that. I don't have the money, so I, I don't know why I'm piping <laughs> in. I can't. I can't do this. Chubb, who was born only three miles from Stonehenge, told a local newspaper that he had no intention to, <laughs> intention of purchasing the Neolithic relic when he entered the theater, but did so on a total whim. <laughs> I wish Fucked I around. had Stonehenge money. <laughs> no, what the hell? While I was in the room, I thought a Salisbury man ought to buy it, and that is how it was done. He said, <laughs> "Easy as that, nice and simple." It may be hard to imagine the world's most famous prehistoric monument. Wow, they've just repeated the line here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. For sale to the highest bidder, but that's what happened when the extensive. Wait, I've scrolled up. That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it saying the same thing again? <laughs> Oh my God, hold on, hold on. There we go. Jeez, well done me. Just a year after Druids placed a curse on the monument's owner for banning their annual sol- solstice celebrations, Antrobus lost his only son and their only... Bu- uh, oh my God, that's a word I've not encountered before. I read this before, but I must have glossed over that. Bar- bar- Baronecti. Baron- Baronetzi? Is that <laughs> just like being a baron? Yeah. I guess yeah, so. Yes. See, that kind of looks right. Yeah. Antrobus lost his only son on the Western Front in October 1914 during one of the opening battles of World War I. Four months later, Antrobus himself passed away at the age of 67 and his and his widow placed his 6,420-acre, nice, Amesbury Abbey estate, which included Stonehenge up for auction. So it's not just like he owned the land. He has, like he owned that land and like a, an estate on the land. Mm. Uh, actually, yeah, he's got a good deal here. He's got... He's got some stones and a house. Some preservationists believe Stonehenge should be turned over to the British government for safekeeping, but it remained in private hands with Chubb's purchase. Reportedly, the lawyer's wife, Mary, was not thrilled with his monumental buy, (laughs) perhaps because she still pined for the dining room set. 
which made it an easier decision when Chubb gifted Stonehenge to the British people in 1918. I think very generous of him. Good boy. Mm. Good boy. Mm. Did the right thing there. Stonehenge is perhaps known uh, is perhaps best known as the most interesting of our national monuments and has always appealed strongly to the British imagination, Chubb wrote in his letter announcing the donation. To me, who was born close to it and during my boyhood and youth visited it at all hours of day and night. <laughs> hey boys, it's 1am, do you want to go, go Stonehenge? I'll get yeah. some uh, Frosty Jacks and go hang out at Stonehenge. <laughs> I wonder, I thought someone must have done that at some point, gone drinking at Stonehenge. I mean, it was probably pretty heavily guarded, but... They probably some drank there shortly after it was built. True. And in yeah, their numerous true. ceremonies. It's part it of wasn't so was. well guarded once upon a time. Um, I'm told people used to just wander up and do what they like. It was pretty quiet, you know. Do you sort of drive place? over there. Oh. Oh, I, yeah, I think I... I read in another article about this that people would just go up and chip off bits of the stone. And take yeah, it yeah. <laughs> when I went um, inside, I, I did the, the actual circle tour, which is they only do it twice a day. And um, on one of the stones, there was a, some like graffiti carved. Well, on a lot of them, there's graffiti carved in from all periods of history. But one of the bits of graffiti was an X and then W-R-E-N. And it was Christopher Wren. The, <laughs> wow. The, um, that had done it like in his youth he had gone over there because that's apparently what you did if you had something you know if you had a bit of a if you were a, a famous rich person you would head down <laughs> to Stonehenge carve your name in and uh, yeah so that's now there it's kind of weird that there's like an actual famous name carved into the stones <laughs> Uh, so it says Chubb visited um, all hours day and night under every conceivable condition of weather in driving tempests of te- tempests of hail, rain and snow, fierce thunderstorms, glorious moonlight and beautiful sunshine. It always had an in- inexpressible charm. I became owner of it with a deep sense of pleasure and had contemplated that it might remain a cherished possession of my family for long years to come. It has, however, been pressed upon me that the nation would like to have it for their own and would prize it most highly. The British government launched an expensive, extensive renovation of Stonehenge in 1919 that included straightening stones, which I, 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 I don't know why, but that feels quite wrong. I feel like you should mm. leave it be. Mm. Make sure it's like maybe a little bit of support so it's not going to fall over. Uh, reset- a lot of them have been re-erected entirely. Oh, oh it says here, and they were reset, reset them in concrete as well. So they really, really did up the place. Yeah. And nearly a century later, the restoration work has continued with the removal of nearby roads and outdated visitor facilities in order to return the nearby landscape to its ancient appearance. In return for his gift, Chubb received the title of First Baronet of Stonehenge, but locals dubbed Sir Cecil Viscount Stonehenge. Chubb. Viscount. Viscount. What? Thanks. (laughs) Viscount. Viscount. That's like the biscuit, isn't it? Yeah. (laughs) It's Bop It. It's Bopeye, actually. 50% off Viscount. (laughs) Chubb, who died at the age of 58 in 1934, stipulated in his donation that those who live near Stonehenge should receive free admission to the monument. To this day, around 30,000 of the 1.3 million people who visit annually can do so without paying the admission fee, thanks to the impulse buy of Stonehenge's last private owner. But hang on, What, what stipulates you getting for free? Uh, if you live in the area, if you link, if you live in a, oh, what's the place called? It. I literally. Do you have it. to bill a, Do you have to bring a Salisbury. utility bill? That's uh, yeah. I do wonder how they check that. <laughs> I guess so. You- <laughs> yeah, it's like when you sell something at CEX, you've got to bring a, a gas bill with you instead yeah. of to get so into some rocks. I've got to pay to get in because I don't live locally. Fuck you, yeah. chub. <laughs> you I've come all the way to see your fucking stones. <laughs> Should have kept it. Yeah. The government's going to frack come it over soon. to see your concrete. <laughs> You've re- realigned, and you're going to charge me to see it. Yeah, disgraceful. I do want to end on a. F- I, I, I spurred on a few quick Google searches of other weird things that were sold of au- sold at auction. I want to play a quick, a very quick game of. Um, here's the thing. Guess how much how much it's sold for. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so Elvis Presley, Presley's lock of hair was sold in 2002 after his hairdresser had been collecting his trimmings for all those years. No way. Any guess in dollars what that went for? This is, is, is going to be total ballpark guesses. Uh, $400,000. I would that? not pay that no, for it. I would it. not pay <laughs> any money for it. But No. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to say, yeah, around around about half a million dollars. 400000 I'm going to go much higher and say $2 million. Oh, you're both way over there. One hundred and fifteen thousand uh, pounds. You know what's okay. good for that hairdresser? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, From, you, if you say they've been collecting it for years or over a long period of time, that surely devalues. If you were like, this is the only remaining lock of Elvis's hair, that would probably go <laughs> a lot higher. But no, yeah. No. Well, staying on the Elvis theme, uh, we have Elvis's dirty underwear, which went to auction oh. in 2012. Is it uh, the one a- he was wearing when he shit himself to death? <laughs> <laughs> That would be great. I'd, I'd be worth a lot of money. I'm mm. going to send you a picture, um, just so you know oh, what you're going, no. what you would be bidding on. Okay, it's exactly as as you'd expect. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's brown, huh? Oh, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> Two million dollars. No way. That's going to be less than the. You could clone Elvis, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> you could clone one of Elvis's shits potentially. <laughs> um, no, that's that's going to be like. Yeah, like a hundred k. It's going to be a bit less than than the hair. Sorry to disappoint, boys. That was a trick question. That one actually didn't sell at auction. Oh, no. I was Did willing no to meet the reserve. <laughs> Is it a reserve of seven thousand pounds? No Whoa, one. Oh, okay. <laughs> I feel like that's that's a conversation starter. Like, yeah, have that on your mantelpiece. Oh, my shitty boxes. <laughs> Funny you ask. Uh, we've got. <laughs> A Dorito shaped like the Pope's hat. Two uh, million dollars. <laughs> uh, this is in 2005. 25k. Oh, you're way over. I think you should get you guys in the auction rooms. You'd be, you'd be fucking making bank. Sold for $1,209. Do you have a picture of this Dorito that looks like the Pope's hat? <laughs> it better have an entire fucking Pope wearing it. Or otherwise... <laughs> Found it. It didn't. Uh, the poor Pat did, in fact, have a website for it itself as well, but it's sadly offline now. This was in two thousand five. DoritoPopeHat.com. Wow. Yeah. What the hell? Of. And what was it's that? A thousand dollars over a thousand dollars. Yeah. All it needs to do is go viral, doesn't it? There was that Among Us chicken nugget that sold for like a million or something ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so good. Uh, lastly, I want to end on the world's largest cat painting which uh, went to auction in 2015. So context, mm. this is a piece featuring 42 cats on a six feet by 8.5 foot canvas. Um, it was so large and heavy that carpenters had to make a special wall reinforced with plywood because when it was put, put up on a normal wall, it pulled the nails right out. Would you like yeah. to see a, a picture of this before? Yeah. Uh, world yes. largest cat. It is like, honestly, it, it bangs. It really, like I would quite happily... If I had the money, buy this on on uh, uh, just just for a bit of fun. Get ready, it's coming. I think it's beautiful. Oh, look how big it is! <laughs> that is spectacular. <laughs> how much that you is very that? good. <laughs> That's got to be. Again, we might be way over egging it, but I'm going to say thirty k. Mm. Two million dollars. <laughs> Somewhere in the middle, eight hundred and twenty six. Thousand. Oh, oh wow! My God. Was the artist famous? No, apparently he's just a billionaire who really liked cats. Okay. <laughs> Did they get a non fungible token for that as well? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Well, there you go. That's that's my foray into fro, fro, Oh my! Why do my I try and say anything that isn't just basic English? This is that was my peruse into 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 the world of auctions. Incredible. Brilliant. Love it. Thank, Thank you, Mikey. You're very welcome. Would you like? A final question. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go for this one. Heron at Book Salamander on Twitter. They ask, what's your favorite story of, quote unquote, fuck around and find out? Mine's when a friend of mine was annoying a horse and ended up getting kicked in the ribs. He did fuck around and he did indeed find out. Damn. Hugs to you, lads. And congrats, Peter. Thank you. Thank you, Heron. Thank you. Mm. Admittedly, I've done the foolish thing here of bringing the question without having my own answer to it. <laughs> Desperately trying to think of one throughout the entire thing. Because most of my fuck around and find out stories impl- apply to me. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm just, maybe that's what they're asking. Um, oh. oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, or, yeah, it could you know, be me. It could, like, it could be you or it, it doesn't have to be you, I guess. Uh, yeah. hmm. oh, what, have I, what is the most stupid thing I've done? I mean, I've already... I guess I shared mine at the beginning of the episode, didn't I? <laughs> Try to do an assault course. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Um, what else is that? Mine, uh, I've told this story before. This probably isn't the worst one either, but one that springs to mind is when 
I mean, I, I wasn't even fucking knowingly fucking around or like not as bad as I thought, but my, my brother, uh, we were at my grandma's house in Scotland and uh, she had a pond in her garden and it was being filled, like the hose pipe was in the pond, switched on, just slowly filling the pond up because it got a bit low. And my brother, we were only like, I was probably about seven, he might have been nine. Uh, and he said, uh, oh, Peter, I dare you to stick the hose pipe over the fence into next door's gar- garden. Now, I don't know if he just, if that was the extent of the dare or if he knew that in the exact place I stuck it over the fence, the neighbour was sitting on the other <gasps> side of the fence and got sprayed with water. Uh, and I got literally sent to bed with no tea. Oh. Um, I think my dad was kind of embarrassed by me because we didn't see my grandma on that side so often because she was as I say she was up in Scotland so you know on this rare occasion we'd gone to see her uh, her neighbour gets sprayed with water and she's she's clearly embarrassed by that and my dad was embarrassed you know for because because his mum was upset so everyone was very cross with me and uh, <laughs> yeah but I did not know she was there I don't know if my brother knew she was there but I certainly didn't oh dear I, th- I, th- I think another one of one of my most guilty days of life was the time I cheated on a spelling test in school. I I can't have been very subtle about it for the teacher to notice. I was like <laughs> had had the answers in in my in, in my desk in my drawer. I must have just been like oh, leaning back. Oh yeah, that's it. And then getting back to writing, the teacher at the end like told me off, scolded me, and told me to tell my parents what I did. And because you, you're a good little boy back then, you do that. You go home and tell your parents that you've been a naughty boy, even though you, you do. That's that secret yeah. could just die with me. Now you've told the world. Oh, no. The world knows you're never going to get a job now, Michael. (laughs) Oh, my God. He can't spell. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Similarly, the Village Park, there was a chain with a lock on the end of it that was hanging off the gate to the car park. And uh, I picked it up and I threw it over a fence. And I don't know why I did, but I did. And then... I'm not even sure how my mum found out. Oh, I think maybe <laughs> someone watched me do it. An adult watched me do it and then told my mum. Oh, and my mum was it. furious, like really cross. And she made me go n- around the corner to the man who looks after the car park and apologise. <laughs> and I had to go back up to the park and uh, pick pick up the chain from over the fence and put it back where I found it. That's you told. Yeah, I Naughty learned my boy. lesson. Yeah, there's nothing worse than doing something cool that's rebellious <laughs> and then being caught in the act right told there and there. Told by your mum. Told yeah. by your mum. I have to go around and apologise. The man was not cross at all. He was a bit bemused, to be honest. I don't think he really gave a shit. Uh, but yeah. it was uh, humiliating and very, very sad time for me. Have you ever thrown a, a, a lock in chain since? No. Lesson no, learned. Lesson learned, learned, yeah. Well done. We're proud of you, Ben. Thank you. Come a long way. A lot of growth since then. There we go. That's it. Amazing. It all seemed relatively tame compared to get kicked in the ribs by a horse. uh, Yeah. I mean, I can't think of any off the top of my head. I certainly haven't been kicked by a horse. No, No, I've not either. Terrified of horses. Horrible creatures. (laughs) Disgusting animals. Uh, Well, there we are. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you uh, go to a certain website, there's a store, Michael. You're goddamn right. If you go on your web web browser, web browser, wow. your web browser, <laughs> your web browser of choice, and in that URL bar, type in store.yogscast.com and head over to the little video section on that website. You will find a veritable bounty of goodies. Featuring our latest design, it is Beans Time. Yes, uh, it is. It was also it payday time. last week, so go Ooh. on, get on it. Oh, that's giving me an idea for a commemorative Beans Time plate. That'd be great. Eat your beans oh, off wow. it. Wow, that would be oh, good. Can yeah. we get plates? Can we do plates? I mean, I, we could probably do it ourselves with sharpies. So we could do like a limited one of five, <laughs> and that'd be it. <laughs> People would yeah, buy them, and yes. <laughs> <laughs> we've got Beans Time. We've got hoodies. Hoodie singular, sorry, mugs, plural, and many other classic designs, including 
the 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 fan favorite, the VS One T shirt. Go go go! Have still a, there. Go have a look. Still, still available. There. Yeah, that's great. Remember when we still said we were only going to do it for a certain amount of time, and then Yogg's yeah. class just re-added it to the store without <laughs> telling us. <laughs> Yeah, Sorry to devalue everyone's merch with that, that cool, action. isn't it? That was really good. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Yeah, store.yogscast.com. Go check it out. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all.com forward slash vidiots official. Bit.ly forward slash vidiots official discord. That's camel case vidiots official and discord. So there's a capital letter at the start of each word if you don't know what that means. Uh, go hang out with Podiots listeners. They're there. They are chatting. They're sharing memes. Go join the community. Go say hello. Yeah. Uh, we've also got twitch.tv forward slash vidiots official. Go check that out. We stream there sometimes. And of course, streamlabs.com forward slash podiots donations. Donate three pounds or more to get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the show and join Pod Squad. Mikey, kick us off. Specky Becky, invite to Caroline's gangbang. The generous can't shack it. And the equally generous congrats peeps from Sam DeBarb. Kermit the Pog. Kellogg's stopped me monking off. Podiots <laughs> present Raindrop Joy. Katie Kin Solo. Peter Chu. I choose you. Evil Waffles. The neighbors scat. The incredibly generous Otto Carno. Thank you very Andy much. Pa- Thank you. Sorry? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Andy Pandy. Rock Shandy. Big Dick Barry. Caroline. Please take me back. On Halls in Durham, what do? Alfred Hugecock, Stephen Scordes. Also, uh, Freddy Weber pun name. Podiots presents Hadi M. Nor, who was very generous. Mr. Bobby becomes a soap actor. Peter's gaming uncle. Caroline, what's the Wi Fi code? Tiny Peter's big day. Lord Brotovich. LLL, what song was it again? LLL. you. <laughs> Mr. Floppy Babalooney, Mighty Dwarven Cervix, Mr. Macca, Big Titty Jesus 42, Don Echo 7, Snap Ben's Tomikey Pizza, Mid- uh, Midwestern Kevin, who was very generous, Tyne Moth Pier Diet's Lighthouse, uh, Podiots Presents Pro Trainer, Just Keep Swimming Ash, and Dwayne the Plops Johnson. We've got the very generous sex young homosexual, Dick My Chunker, Amy Wix does not shop at Wix, Scissors in My Daddy's Ass, Wix, 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 Scissor Me Daddy Ass, Not Vidiots but Podiots instead of Bix, You Seen the Price of Lure Pack, 20 quid a pack, The Booper Smash Brothers, Carolina in Wisconsin, The Tesco What Sells Horse Come, Stroke Off Trent, Stroke on Trent, Strong Trent, the Bond's name, Bond's name's the James, Bames Nons having a strong call a Bondulance. And that is your pod squad for this week. Thank you so much. Once again, three pounds or more, streamlabs.com forward slash podiance donations. We love you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Peter, what's on Vidiots this week? Vidiots this week is uh, Becoming Waste, oh, that's the 19th. Uh, worst games ever, Tweenies Game Time. Oh. Um, becoming Building Gods in Vanilla Minecraft Episode 6. The Thousand Yard Stair, WCW Backstage Assault, uh, featuring Cultaholic. Worshipping False Idols, Vanilla Minecraft Episode 7. A few dams. Becoming Wasteland Survivors, Fallout New Vegas Part 2. So that's more Let's Play. Uh, Podius Episode 11, Dog Rap, featuring Cultaholic. (laughs) Happy Anniversary... Oh, that's an unlisted video that's been done for someone. That's the three of us doing a personal message. Um, post some tat tw- number 23, Fishy Burger Boys. Fallout New Vegas in real life live action finale. Draw the fans. Redstone Disaster, Minecraft Episode 8. Uh, instant Giblets, Quake Champions. Hanging from the Gallows, Vanilla Minecraft Episode 9. Post some tat 24, Fruity Loopers. Um and uh, Gmod car building challenge. Mm. Oh, okay. uh, and that is it. Car. Wow, what a what a stacked two weeks. Go yeah. and check it out on the channel that is losing subscribers every day. <laughs> uh, go watch them. Go, go and subscribe, and maybe. Yeah. Uh, one of your your best people. Peter mm. uh, at the wedding told me that, uh, and I'm not sure if she listens to the 
the podcast actually but she said that uh skyrim zoo is her comfort watch no that's lovely i know which one you're talking about i know she's a big fan um uh, i don't know if she listens to the podcast though she might do but that's she said good. she's a bit starstruck by you now did she tell you that she didn't tell me that at all no she said when she sees you she feels a bit starstruck right oh, well i thought she might feel a bit starstruck when she saw you but um oh no evidently she's not very, very calm and cool and collected yeah you, though you're a celebrity you're big intense. time you're celebrity. the guy off skyrim skyrim zoo skyrim zoo that's right that's me yeah. Go watch Skyrim Zoo, everyone. Yeah. Uh, I haven't watched it since it came out. I should probably go do that. Yeah, same. Yeah. It's been ages. Uh, I've watched the anyway. last episode a few times, but uh, not the rest. Have you? Oh, see, maybe I should go and watch them. Mikey did a fantastic job editing together our on-the-fly nonsense, yeah. Uh, yeah, which we just made up as we went. And Peter managed to make everything work. And I sat there, and it was great. <laughs> Uh, so well done. Go team. Everyone had their role to play. Uh, the Mikey, where can you be found on the internet? At Powerboy on Twitter is the best place to see what I'm up to. If you head over there, you'll find a lovely summary of Peter's wedding. Highly recommend giving it yes. a watch if you haven't already. Yes, 100%. And Peter, where can we be found on the internet? We can be found at that Peter Austin and at confused underscore dude on uh, Twitter. Uh, but also we are doing content over on a different channel as well as video slash podiots. It's Team Triple Jump. You can find us there. Uh, find us at Team Triple Jump on YouTube and Twitch and Facebook and Twitter. Go and have a look at what we're doing if you like. You don't have to, but you should. But yeah, you actually you have to. You have to do it. <laughs> it's the law. Sorry. It is the law. Uh, wonderful. Why not leave us a five-star review on iTunes or your platform of choice? It helps something to do with Al Gore's rhythms. Do we have a final question uh, to see out the podcast? Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> mm. No, we've got homework. Go and... Go and uh, do some, do some Podiots presents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get us on some more countries. England's get a bit invested. Google in account minute. banned. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> First one to get the Google account banned <laughs> gets, gets a free T-shirt. It says no, we cannot honour that. We are not in control of the T-shirts. That's Yogscast. You will get a shout out though, yeah. uh, and also if we can get on every continent, I think that would be a big, a big can achievement. Can someone so, rename yes. the North Pole to North Pole Diets? <laughs> <laughs> that's yes. not a continent there it's south pole do antarctica south pole do it can you rename the south pole the north pole and the north pole the south pole <laughs> can you do that as well why is it so easy and why has nobody <laughs> changed know. the time bridge back yet oh, i don't know i don't know it's it's a mystery but uh, we'll see what where we stand next time we record an episode but until then thank you so much for listening and we'll see you in the next one goodbye everybody Bye-bye.